Well, respite services really started by the uh, Governor's Planning Council, actually. It was one of those services that uh, began in the um, mid-late uh, 70s, to be thought about anyway. There was a, a, a state law that passed, I think it was Public Law 22, I believe. And uh, it, it provided what they called, the legislature called family subsidy. And it was supposed to be, it was a pot of money that the Division on Mental Retardation, which I was attached to, was to distribute. And uh, I was the one uh, put in charge of that. And so uh, one of the things that uh, I had to do was define what family subsidy was because the legislature didn't. They just put a pot of money there. It was a small pot of money at that. It was only about $150,000. And so... Uh, 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 along with Bob Spaulding, who was my boss at the time, uh, we developed the definition of family subsidy that included respite services as one of its service forms. And so this money could be distributed to various entities, mainly the local community agency, uh, to be used to support a respite program. Uh, so we tried to define what respite services were, and what it would constitute and so on. Generally, respite services meant that it was a form of, so, uh, of support uh, for the family to allow a caregiver some break from the responsibilities of service that included uh, management of that person at home. And usually it was for uh, the use of uh, parents um, who could um, have some one person sit during their absence and feel confident that that person would take good care of their child, whether it's adult or, or a minor child. Um, so it began very small a, as that. And then uh, fairly soon after that subsidy, the council came through with money that for a respite services program. And they were willing to underwrite the administrative cost of managing uh, respite services. So they would pay for based on the grant criteria, they would pay for certain aspects of the administration of respite services. So some agencies then began to develop a respite program that included respite reimbursement for respite administration and the use of family subsidy money uh, to buy respite services. And so those agencies began to train people and match people and talk to people about how they might use services and so on. So that began to develop in the late uh, 70s and 80s in general. And then uh, again, as the Medicaid waiver and the so-called uh, um, filling out of the continuum, as I mentioned before, uh, respite services became one of those defined services. And so the waiver began to take up support and the state uh, began to back off from its, its uh, investment in uh, respite services per se and except to the extent they match the money for, for the federal funds. So respite services began to become, it did become a, finally, a Medicaid waiver program uh, and overseen through those mechanisms. Mm -hmm.